And away we go. It's your DFS early bird right here from awesomeo.com. Dan Strafford, Adam Scher, along with you on this Friday morning, getting you ready for an NBA slate. We are already in full swing here for the National Basketball Association. Lots of games on Friday night. We had three games on Thursday night. LeBron James making his Lakers debut. Plenty to talk about there, but we're going to focus on Friday and focus on Adam because Adam is always loquacious here at the top of any podcast or show. Adam, how the hell are you doing? Doing pretty good, Dan. Uh, I'm enjoying basketball season so far. It's been a nice (laughs) change of of pace from baseball. So (laughs) it's been two days. Um, I, I appreciate yeah, your... I'm, I'm not tired of it yet. Right, right. Oh, yeah, uh, that's fair. Um, I need more than anything for the Red Sox to not win the World Series. So whatever way that comes to pass, whether it's the NBA um, having like a uh, merger with Major League Baseball and saying, hey, the World Series is not happening, um, or um Fenway imploding on itself with no one inside obviously I don't want injuries to anyone I I, it just it just it can't happen I can't I can't deal with it I cannot deal with the Red Sox winning the Patriots are gonna win the AFC East again that's a foregone the the Bruins look like they could have a decent team and the Eppin Celtics are probably gonna be the first first place team in the uh the uh the Eastern Conference in in the NBA and listen does that mean anything really no because obviously the talent's at West but I can't deal with it anymore, Adam. I, so, I, so you're not you weren't a fan of the Joe West home run call last night. So, listen, I, I did not see it live. I, I've watched it a couple of times. Um, one, Major League Baseball cameras suck. Like yeah. the idea that they don't have cameras on the foul poles. They they did have one. It was blocked by a security guard. Well, well yeah, right. It's correct, but like, but but higher up. Exactly, like correctly right. mounted, like right. <laughs> like not something like on the wall, but something <laughs> that is higher up, maybe ten feet, twenty feet up, that is slightly angled down, that gives you enough of per- perspective, and that means for like ten feet, twenty feet. I'm not looking for something all the way at the center field. And further, the, the idea that Red Sox fans are so angry on Twitter for people questioning whether or not that was fan interference makes me laugh. Like that, that yeah. just makes me laugh. Like you won, you won the game move on. Don't question other people questioning this. Let it just be. Let it be one of those things that happens. You move on from it. Let it be. But um, listen, I, uh, I'm i hoping the Astros come back tonight. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think that the Dodgers are going to win the NL, which sucks because I really like the Brewers team. Um, and I'm going to have to rely on, of all people, Clayton Kershaw uh, to have a big series. And that scares the crap out of me. But anyway, uh, we, we digress there. We'll talk ba- uh, baseball at a, a later date, meaning February or March. Uh, but we will talk uh, NBA here today. We're going to go uh, probably for this last one, uh, go game by game. Uh, to just make it easy, give uh, Adam from a, an analysis standpoint, me from a setup standpoint, uh, the easiest path in here uh, to get you guys going uh, with your research, the uh, – preview show in the morning and the deep dive and then the uh, live up to lock lots of content over there at awesome if you're listening to this podcast you're not a member of awesome you can use the promo code early bird uh, to get in for uh, free for one week so you get everything but the fantasy cruncher add-on with that promo code i will say that one more time if you want to hear it over and over again listen to any of emax pods but anyway um <laughs> I love you, Mac. I know you're listening. That's the fun of that. But anyway, we're going to talk game by game here. Uh, and we're going to start with Charlotte and Orlando. Uh, a game that, uh, you know, first pass, knowing these two teams, knowing what happened in their first games to start the year, it was the, the Kemba Walker show for the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, for Orlando, Aaron Gordon, 26 points, 16 boards in his first game. And I don't know if you saw Adam. But after the game, he made a comment about rebounding in the NBA. And it, it's not too surprising, but it's surprising enough where he said, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm realizing now you have to box out in this league. I thought you could just jump high and grab the rebound. Yeah, you know, when the greatest athletes in the world are all playing the same sport, maybe you need to have a little bit more effort. But I dig it. it. It's, it's, like the, it's like pitchers in baseball that – throw that you know thrown 100 miles an hour their whole life and have no idea how to actually 
you know, sequence pitching, like sequence a, a batter and, and command their pitches because they've never had to. Yep. Like exactly. Aaron Gordon's just always been the best athlete on any basketball court he's ever been on. Exactly right. He just knew how to go get the basketball and he's finally realizing, oh wait, I have to do some of the small things that I never had to do before that uh, those lesser peons on the court had to do to, to box me out. So uh, a minus two for Charlotte, uh, 218 over under. Again, not all uh, end all be all there with those numbers, but uh, setting the scene a bit. Obviously, Kemba uh, at 8,300 on DK makes for uh, a, a high usage play, uh, I think, for this entire season. You're going to see him taking a lot of shots. Aaron Gordon's going to be very involved for Orlando. And then you have the likes of uh, Vucevic uh, at center against a team that has not much down low. What do you got in this contest? Yeah, I mean, Kemba is one of those guys that I think always he, – he normally doesn't end up really in my cash lineups because – there's normally guys in that upper price tier that I think are a little bit safer, but in tournaments, it's always appealing because he's, you know, in that $8,000 range and he can go for 50 plus fantasy points relatively easily with which, with how much usage he gets. So, you know, I like the spot for him. I think Batum is, is reasonably priced as well. Probably looking at upper twenties and minutes from Lamb and, and Malik Monk, which is nice. The front court is kind of a mess. We have Cody Zeller priced up higher than he was opening night. He's up to 4,800 now, which I think is pretty appropriate. So I'm not too interested in going there or to Hernan Gomez because I don't expect them to play alongside each other much, if at all. So they kind of are limited unless one of them gets in foul trouble. So uh, from the Charlotte side, it's going to basically be, you know, Kemba is my favorite guy. And, and then, you know, if you want to mix in some, of a tomb or lamb or, or monk like the minute should be there orlando there was one interesting thing that we saw in the first game you know aaron gordon had a monster game which you pointed out and he's phenomenal he's a high upside play that is only getting better but we saw bamba get meaningful fourth quarter minutes over nikola vucevic even though vucevic was playing well that's an eye on and it's a good enough reason i think to downgrade vucevic at least a little bit because Bamba's looked pretty good. He's he's at least expected to be good on the defensive end early on. So it would make sense if Orlando does trust him to, you know, give him meaningful minutes. And we saw them do that in the first game. It cost Vucevic a lot of meaningful minutes. It, it hurt people that had Vucevic. So I'm going to be shying away from Vucevic a little bit, especially when he's still at an elevated price tag. Uh, it's funny, uh, as I uh, record this podcast, I got an email from Netflix with suggestions, and the top trending now suggestion is Adam Ruins Everything from True TV. So, yeah, uh, probably my last login has been making that reference to me on Twitter for like two years. Now. Oh, nice. I, 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 never, I never even heard of the show until. No, he- neither, neither have I. And what's funny is he's riding in on what looks like a bomb. So, the Adam bomb from. FB oh, yeah, yeah. it all it all comes full circle all there all so. comes together yeah it, uh, i'm i'm big on on uh, the connection of of everything so uh happy <laughs> to see that but and it's about education which ties into my day job so it's, it, it's all all coming together here um listen i don't know that i looking at initial lineup construction I mean literally initial here as we record i don't know that kemba is where i'm starting any lineups but i i have no problem landing there i have no problem him being my point guard he's only point guard eligible here on dk but um i i think there are other ways to go here especially with russ westbrook listed as out on a couple of uh publications so that brings uh schroeder uh into play at a cheaper price point than than walker at potentially a high usage uh level here but I like Walker a lot. Let's let's go to another game that should be an absolute shit show, uh, which is the New York Knicks and the Brooklyn Nets. Listen, I, I'm a Knicks fan. We talked about that on Wednesday morning's podcast. Um, they played well, and they should have. They played the Atlanta Hawks, and the Nets played a Pistons team that should be better than they were last year. So game ones I'm not taking a ton from, other than the fact that the Knicks, I think, may push pace more this year uh, than we might have expected. And the Nets uh, should be right, you know, similarly in line there. Maybe actually a little bit uh, below the Knicks when when pace comes into play over the course of the entire season. So the likes of Trey Burke and Nilakina and Russell, um, and, and then you get into the bigs with Cantor and Jared Allen, they would all seem to be somewhat in play here, at least dependent on their price points. 218 over under. 
sorry, 218.5. Brooklyn uh, currently favored minus three and a half. I like this game and maybe my East Coast New York bias, I admit that, uh, but this feels like one that you get enough value out of, you could have some uh, some upside scorers here. Yeah, I think this is going to be a good game for fantasy purposes. It's going to be really, really ugly to watch. Yep. But neither of these teams are going to play much defense. They both have some young guys with talent that are reasonably priced. You look at the Brooklyn side, and Jared Allen looked really good in the preseason. He looked phenomenal in, in their first game against Detroit. This is not a bad matchup for him. His price tag went up, but it appears like it looks like at least on DraftKings price tags went up pretty quickly across the board. Uh, there's kind of been some sticker shock as I'm just kind of scrolling through, through prices. So I'm not going to rule him out just because he's 6,800 now. I mean, he's going to play around 30 minutes and he's just been very, very productive going back to preseason. And then, you know, in the, in the first game here, uh, Karis Levert is another one. He's looked, he looked great in the preseason. He looked phenomenal in the first game. Alan Crabb's probable here, but I don't think that affects Levert too much. I still expect him to get to play minutes into the low 30s. He's still going to do what he does, you know, score, pick up some assists, do a little bit of everything when he's on the floor. And I think this is a good game for him to to pick up stats. So I like both of those guys. You get into D'Angelo Russell, who the minutes are not exactly where you would want them to be for a, a sort of high-priced point guard, but he, he can do so much in those minutes. He's such a high-usage player that – I have no you know real issue with him. Rondé Hollis Jefferson's got a question, uh, still got the questionable tag, so we'll have to wait and see on him. If he plays, I assume he's going to be a little bit limited. If he sits, it still kind of sucks because I would like Ed Davis to get those minutes because he's actually productive. But even though he was playing well last game, we still saw Jared Dudley on the floor to close it out alongside Allen, and Jared Dudley absolutely sucks. So I'm not sure we can do a whole lot with that. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the last guy, I guess, Spencer Dinwiddie had a really good game against Detroit, but with Alan Crabb back, I think that does cut into Dinwiddie's minutes. Yeah, and to point out, it's not only an injury for RHJ, it's also the birth of, I believe, uh, his first child. Uh, so there's a lot happening in his life right now. So whether or not he plays Friday will be intriguing. Uh, and I do think that cascades. You have Damari Carroll already out with what ankle surgery uh, there could be some interesting extra minutes to go around here uh, for this Nets roster as we get into game number two uh, on their season. Let's move on to Cleveland and Minnesota. Sure. Um, this is a game that I'm not really sure what to make of simply because of what's happening with uh, Jimmy Butler. Apparently, you have uh, trade talks that have pretty much become non-existent at this point. Uh, Minnesota minus eight and over under though of 20, uh, 223.5. Um, Osman had a, a great debut, uh, in the starting lineup, 17 points, 10 boards. The Timberwolves are a team that will have to track and we'll have to so- sort of make decisions around what's happening socially and anecdotally for this team when it comes to the Tibbs and, uh, Jimmy Butler saga. I don't know that we're going to be able to quantify it. We're going to have to make our best guesses, but are these two teams on your radar for Friday night? Yeah, I think there are a couple of interesting plays. Um, One thing to point out is I've alluded the prices a couple of times, and I just realized I had FanDuel pricing open and not DraftKings. So that's why everyone seems to believe. That would cause some sticker shock. Yeah, um, I I noticed it when I looked to see if Jimmy Butler was still underpriced, and he was suddenly 9,500. I was like, that's... That's a pretty big jump from 67. But uh, yeah, so I think that Butler is still a good play. I mean, he had a good game opening night, and I expect him to play well when he's out there. I mean, he's a guy that he's a max effort guy. He's a very high intensity guy. He's not the he's not a player that you expect to go out there and and loaf. 8100 on DraftKings. Now that I have that up, is more expensive than he was, but it's still pretty cheap. I mean, you're talking about a guy who should play a bunch of minutes here. He was a little bit limited in that first game, but I would expect him to get back into the 35, 36 minute range. He does a lot on the offensive end. So I still like him. And on the other side for Cleveland, you had Kevin Love in the first game, a little bit limited because of his conditioning, but I would assume is, is a little bit better to go here. It's a, it's a nice matchup against his former Minnesota team. It's a team that does kind of funnel offense to, stretch fours because of the defensive scheme that they run. It gives them open looks and love obviously is a very, very good shooter. He's going to have monster usage in this offense. So I like him $8,000 there, I think is too cheap. It's 
it's basically where we've seen him priced when he was playing alongside LeBron and now he's just right. going to get so much more usage. Um, so, so I like that CD Osman's price tag came up enough to where I think he's still in play, but it's not the great price that, that we had on him before loves the one that just really like jumps off the page for me here. Yep. Uh, I'm right there with you. And I think Kevin Love at AK is, is somewhere from a roster construction perspective, I may start. Um, it feels like a price point, and we haven't gone through all the games. We're, we're through three of nine, so uh, we'll, we'll get through the rest as we go through. But I don't mind starting there. And and I get, I personally, and I'll admit this, I get bogged down to an extent with that. Where, where do you start the roster construction? How do you make all these pieces fit? Um, but I, I don't mind at all at 8K. Uh, Kevin Love on this slate in, in what could be a very high, very high usage and very high uh, upside uh, perspective for that game. Atlanta and Memphis is next, and I have no idea what to make of this game. Um, I mean it. And then uh, it's early in the season, trying to figure out who these teams are, what they're going to do. Uh, Marcus Gasol had an okay game in the opener. I guess he salvaged towards the end and made it worthwhile. Um, Torian Prince has talent. Trey... Uh, which Trey am I on here? Trey Young? Trey Young. Uh, Trey Young's talented, but is he a, you know, a fantasy contributor this early on when he could also go two of 20, honestly, from the field and, and make it a mess of a game against Memphis? This is a contest overall I'll probably stay away from just because I don't get it yet. I, I don't know how who these two teams are, and I'd rather find safer floors other, uh, otherwise elsewhere to put those two words together uh minus seven and a half for memphis 209.5 over under in this contest both teams are zero and one don't make too much of that is this are there fantasy pieces here for you adam only Tre- maybe tory and prince but the one that i'm most interested in i think is trey young and it's solely in tournaments and i've said this every single time that i've talked about trey young so far um and actually i guess at 5600 maybe cash i don't know it depends how the, the slate breaks out but I've, I've said it every time I've talked about Trey Young. He's not going to be consistent. He's usually not going to be a cash game play. But the guy's got so much upside because he's a good passer. And if his shot's falling, you know he's going to just chuck shots from anywhere on the floor. And he's going to have free reign to do that on this, in this Atlanta offense. And it's not an appealing – it's not a particularly appealing spot against Memphis. And for the most part, minutes are going to be so spread out on both of these teams that you don't really like anyone. But at $5,600, I mean, Trey Young, you do expect him to play 33, 32, 33 minutes. He doesn't have to be that productive on a permanent basis to put up a score that you can live with. And the upside is there. I mean, this guy is going to have 40 and 50 fantasy point games this season. He's 5,600. You just just put him in tournament lineups and you know get over the field assuming that he's relatively low on yeah uh, it's I, I i think that's right and uh i don't know if i will go there but i think that's the the right call in in this contest uh one we can move on from quickly to be quite honest and and listen uh you want more coverage you get it over at osmo.com again promo code early bird gets you one week free you get a lot of free content over there on youtube um Shows throughout the day between uh, Adam and Lafayette will be back, I believe, this weekend. And again, uh, condolences out to his family for the loss of, of Lafayette's dad. Um, if you haven't, as of yet, head on over to Twitter. Let him know you're thinking of him, L-O-U-G-H-Y underscore D, um, on Twitter. Um, lots of content over on uh, awesomeo.com and YouTube. Uh, Adam, Lafayette, Josh. Uh, you get Emac sprinkled in as well. And of course, uh, you get uh, Spags and uh, Fast Eddie Fear as well. I'll be filling in from time to time uh, throughout content as well. So lots to, to talk about there, lots to, to get. Uh, and then you get the projections, the rankings, all those different things over there behind the paywall. Toronto and Boston up next, potentially your one and two uh, in the NBA Eastern Conference. Between these two squads, Kawhi had a, a good showing his first time out. Kyle Lowry seemed like his offensive game was uh, in tune in game number one. Both teams want to know. Again, don't take too much from that. But just a 207 over under here, two teams that are somewhat more defensive minded. There are obvious talent here, um, obvious between Kawhi and Tatum and even Jalen Brown. Then you get into obviously Hayward and um, Kyrie Irving. 
You have Kyle Lowry, lots of pieces here. But is this a game really to target? Are these pieces that you think have GPP tournament winning upside? Uh, what say you in this matchup? I think that it's going to be site dependent and price dependent. Looking at Toronto, I don't see a whole lot that I'm going to be interested in there. 85 for Kawhi is okay, but it's not a matchup that I'm you know super thrilled about. You know, Kyle Lowry's price tag went up a little bit. So I don't think there's much that I'm going to like too much from, from the Toronto side. But from the Boston side, at least looking at DraftKings pricing, $6,600 on Kyrie Irving is going to give you tournament upside no matter who he's facing. It's obviously not a great matchup, but – $6,600 to $6,600. Um, so I, I like that price on him. Outside of, of that, though, not really anything that I, I'm too confident in. Yeah, I, I think, and that's fine. And I think that's going to be a lot of this early season NBA, uh, trying to find guys that you're comfortable with in plus matchups is going to be difficult. There was a lot of movement in the NBA this year and a lot of movement towards more and more offense. So Uh, We will all get through this together and figure it all out as we go through. Uh, Up next, Sacramento and New Orleans, which means uh, we get some uh, sweet, sweet Anthony Davis in our lives. So I'm going to assume that he has a ingrown toenail, (laughs) maybe some gastro and to light uh, what, what are we thinking here about the malady that uh fells anthony davis either way the guy's a talent the price tag is exorbitant it's 11 6 i get it but if you can get there good for you uh like the guy can do so much on the basketball court and gives you such an upside um in roster construction i especially against Sacramento uh, to look at this contest. It's a 229 over under. I believe it's a high, our highest of, yeah, it is in fact, our highest of the day minus 11 for new Orleans. Forget about the blowout. I Adam said it. I know Lofty said it. I've said in the past for there to be a blowout. Typically your star players get to at least a reasonable level of reaching value. Um, hopefully they get beyond that and then they sit on the bench, but I think that Davis is fine here. This is a game beyond that. I don't know how much I can predict, but what do you got in this one between the Kings and the Pelicans? Yeah, I'm real interested, really interested in this game because I just think there are so many pieces that can have monster games. And if you're making a bunch of tournament lineups, just mixing and matching from this game as kind of the centerpiece of your lineups, I think makes a lot of sense because yeah, New Orleans is the better team. It's at home. But as you said, especially in tournaments, like if a game is likely to blow out, it does not lower your ceiling. It makes it slightly less probable that you're going to hit it, but it it doesn't lower your ceiling. And the reason that you think it might blow out is because it's such a good spot for a bunch of players. So not playing them because you're afraid they might score too many points is just one of like the dumbest concepts in, in NBA DFS that doesn't seem to go away. Um, so I'm, I'm not worrying about that and you have anthony davis at you said you know you mentioned the price tags expensive but i don't think people have really realized or, or thought through how productive he's going to be this year people wanted the people thought james harden was a better play than him in that last game when harden's playing with you know mellow and, and chris paul you have yep. anthony davis who averaged 1.6 fantasy points per minute without the marcus cousins on the floor last year he's just going to be such a monster in every aspect. He's playing more, more minutes at center. Now he's getting more usage. He's so he's going to get more rebounds, more chances for blocks. Like it's just such a great, great fit for Davis. This team's also playing faster. So um, Davis, I, I expect to be one of the, the best point per minute producers in the NBA this year, even more so than we've seen before. And it's a spot where I expect him to do well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I like him a lot. Drew Holiday at 7,200, that's an egregious price tag for him. He's going to play like 35, 36 minutes. Julius Randle at 71, Peyton at 58. This whole New Orleans team, I think, is actually underpriced on DraftKings. Even Etwan Moore is, you know, should play north of 30 minutes at only $4,300. So mixing and matching two or three guys from this New Orleans team, I think is a good way to go. And you can pretty easily bring it back with Sacramento. You have um, keep, be sure to keep an eye on their starting lineup. They, or what's announced as best you can, because they made a very last minute change before the last game. And so I kind of assume that it's going to be in flux, although they did play well in that game, but uh, Bialica, if he's going to play 28 to 30 minutes here, he's only 4,600. 
that makes him a, a pretty appealing option. Buddy Heald, Cauley Stein, Fox, these are all guys that have upside. And kind of roto- rotating them through lineups and pairing them with some of these New Orleans guys, I think it's going to give you a really, really good basis for your tournament lineups and then you know mixing and matching around them to, to get some differentiation. Uh, don't forget that uh, Sacramento made a trade with uh, DeMarcus Cousins for what What was it? It was Steph Curry? Is that what the... I thought it was Clay Thompson. Someone else told me it was Steph Curry, though, so it probably was Steph Curry. No, no, I like, no, no, no sorry. My, my point, it, the, I'm saying the comparison of De'Aaron Fox uh, for... Yeah, Buddy, Buddy Heald, but... Oh, sorry, yeah. Buddy Heald, right. It was, it, yeah. I, I thought it was Steph Curry, right? Yeah, well, I thought it was Clay Thompson, but some, I was talking about it with someone the other day. I'm pretty sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, sorry, De'Aaron Fox. Uh, Buddy Hill is the right uh, player there. But uh, I'm pretty sure it was Steph Curry that the GM said that he thought he was getting in return. And sorry to say, <laughs> that, that is not the case. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we move on next to the pace. And the Red Sox have moved on to the World Series. Um, and my life here in, in Massachusetts will get that much better. Um, listen, uh, 2004 was terrible um and i get it that it's silly um and i've gotten far removed from caring so much about sports that individual teams influence how i feel uh 2004 sucked um but uh, as i posted uh, on uh maybe on twitter don't know facebook wherever it was um moving to massachusetts has not gone well um from a sports perspective like i I already moved in while they were already running hot and it just stayed the same uh so it it, we'll we'll see what happens next but uh pacers milwaukee um miles turner i'm a big fan of i just love the way he plays basketball i also love the way he writes in uh the players tribune if you want to check that out just talking about the city uh, of indianapolis and and the state uh, and how they've gotten behind the pacers uh, this is a matchup where you do have Giannis and Teddy Compo. Uh, always fun to say his name. Uh, ABC has gigantic upside, just like Anthony Davis. So anytime you can get him into the lineup, I'm not going to disagree with you. Matchup-wise, I think we'll see how uh, the Pacers shake out throughout the year, but it seems fine from my perspective. What do you got in this matchup? Yeah, Giannis is another one that I think takes a big step forward this year. His shooting in general has been better. His three-point shooting has evolved, and that's going to make him a really, really basically impossible to defend player. So I, I, like, I don't like him as much as Davis, but I like him a lot. Um, the price tag is expensive. It's, it's in Davis's range. I would keep him you know, behind Davis, even though he's a little bit cheaper. Um, but beyond that, you know, it kind of just becomes guys with ceilings that you can't be too confident in. You know, Eric Bledsoe and Chris Middleton, I think, are both – pretty fairly priced you know they have some upside but i don't think they're going to get there all that often um brooke lopez at 4900 i think a decent play um obviously he can contribute on the offensive end so i have you know some interest there from the indiana side it's it's tough i mean i expect this milwaukee defense to be good they just have so much length that i think it's going to be you know kind of tough the the price tag on all the depots fair but i don't really like the spot for him it's it's kind of a tough spot i think for people like Oladipo that, you know, play with the ball in their hands so much in this matchup. So I, I don't, I don't mind Turner. Um, 5,800, I think's you know, pretty nice, but Giannis is pretty clearly my favorite play from this game. And then everyone else is just kind of secondary. All right, let's move on next to our second to last matchup, Oklahoma city and the Clippers last I saw, and this is as we're recording Thursday night, Westbrook already out according to, uh, a couple of different reports I know is Brett Dawson from The Athletic uh, that had it uh, first, but it, it is subject to change. So we may see Russell Westbrook ending up to suit up Friday night. But obviously that plays a large part in how this game shakes out. Uh, a Clippers team that doesn't have a ton going on, but you have Tobias Harris and, and somebody who has some talent there. Dennis Schroeder, though, is the one who – Probably needs the most focus if Westbrook is out. Usage should be there, along with Paul George, but Schroeder's price tag feels a little bit more manageable at 7,700. Well, I guess George at 8,700 isn't that overtly over the top, but um, feels like you could have some pieces here if Westbrook is out that could uh, be key cogs to your tournament teams. Do you like Schroeder on this slate? Is it solely Westbrook dependent, or do you see some upside no matter what? Yeah, so if Westbrook's out, then I have interest in Schroeder. If Westbrook's back, then I think you're kind of getting Schroeder at a 
like impossible price point just because he his price is jacked up because of Westbrook being out. So when he comes back, he's just naturally going to be overpriced. Um, but but if he's out, I mean, you're going to see a bunch of minutes from Schroeder. He is not shy about shooting the ball, and he should be the second the second option on offense behind George. So I think it's a you know a, a good spot for him. Pat Beverly can give him a bit of trouble, I think, but the pace in this game should be fast enough that the uh, a little bit of an efficiency hit shouldn't be too much of an issue. Paul George last year without Westbrook on the floor averaged one and a quarter fantasy points per minute. He is going to play huge minutes as well. So I think that even at a slightly elevated price tag over where we saw in their first game, you know, 8,700, I think is still pretty fair for him. Um, I think I'd rather go to like a Kevin Love if I have to pick one out of the two, but I, I still like George a lot. Um, Steven Adams should do well. His price tag went up too, though, so so nothing but a secondary option there. Um, Jeremy Grant at 4,100 would make for a decent value play if nothing, you know, great opens up just because – he should play in the mid twenties. You know what he does with those minutes is anyone's guess, but um, if better value doesn't open up, Jeremy Grant certainly in play. All right, let's close it out with our final game of the evening: Golden State and Utah, which could be a fun game here. Obviously, you have the uh, All Star that is uh, Joe. In- I kid, not Joe Ingles. I'm just having some fun here, but nonetheless, uh, this is a game that uh, has a, a two eighteen over under. Golden State just minus two and a half. Uh, the Utah Jazz, one of the best defensive teams in the league. If defense matters, you make that decision. Uh, this is a home game for Utah. Listen, th- this is the sort of game that if it happens to go over and you predict it correctly, you could have all of the best options in, in GPPs. You, between Gobert uh, and Rubio and Ingles from the Utah side and even Steph and Draymond and uh, you go to to the center spot with uh, someone like Damian Jones. Damian Jones, it's pronounced it correctly. Um, there's a lot here, and not to say it's a game stack, but I feel like this is one that people may discount more than they necessarily should. How do you think this one shakes out? I agree with you because my first thought was that I don't feel like talking about this game, but it's actually a spot that's really good. I mean, Golden State going into Utah, that's a team that should force them to play four quarters. And we did see Utah. I mean, obviously it's one game and I don't expect it to be the norm, but we kind of saw them get wrecked by the Kings starters. You know, De'Aaron Fox went for like 41 fantasy points. The Kings actually looked good against them. Obviously Steph Curry can, can, you know, dominate against anyone. They have the pieces to, they're just so hard to defend. So um, I think this is actually a game that you can game stack if you're looking to get away from what will probably be a popular one in, in New Orleans. Um, I think you can go here for sure. I mean, uh, you know, whether it's one-offs or, or game stacks, um, Curry, Durant, obviously would be the the most appealing plays from Golden State. And, but then you can bring it back with, you know, Gobert, uh, Joe Ingles, uh, Donovan Mitchell. So, yeah, I think it's actually a pretty appealing game. Yeah, I, I like this one a lot. One that uh, always the, the late night hammer is fun. Uh, but this is a game that I think I may end up having more pieces of than I initially thought when we logged in to uh, record this podcast. Uh, as I said, lots of free content over at Osmo.com, but also you get uh, rankings, projections, uh, and some write-ups behind the paywall. And uh, more than worthwhile. Uh, so check it out uh, by using the promo code EARLYBIRD. That is free for one week, and you get everything but the Fantasy Cruncher. Uh, don't forget to check out Adam over on Twitter, uh, Ship My Money DFS. You can always find him in Slack chat as well. Uh, if you are a user by the name of Godheem, make sure to use all capital letters when writing to Adam, and he will be sure to reply to all and every single one of your... I, I kid because I love Godheem. I don't think he listened to this podcast, but uh, nonetheless, uh, still fun uh, here on the podcast. Um, anyway. Um, We'll be back with you tomorrow morning with Emac. I believe it's Emac and Adam, but I'm not going to put Adam on that schedule as of quite yet in case he decides to go out drinking Friday night. And I wouldn't yeah, blame yeah, you. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. You'll, you'll do both. Um, yeah. God bless you. Um, and then you get, uh, I believe Lofi and I on Monday could potentially be Adam as well as uh, Lofi still deals with some family stuff. I... I'm dealing with family stuff Sunday and Monday as well. So most likely I'll be there on the podcast, but Monday morning you will hear from somebody here at awesome.com. And uh, as always, you can find us on Twitter, uh, awesome underscore com uh, for the Twitter handle. 
Uh, with that said, uh, best of luck on Friday slate. It's one of the bigger ones. The $4, I think, has over $450,000 in prizes over on DK. So get at that, get some money, and we'll see you over in Slack chat if you are a member of Osmo.com. Best of luck on Friday. We'll check you back here on your early bird special from Osmo.com.